So let's take a look at some correlation examples. Um, we pulled the daily returns for Apple, S&P 500 ETF, Dow Jones 30 ETF, uh, NASDAQ 100 ETF, Gold ETF, one to three year treasury bond ETF, emerging markets, local currency, uh, bond ETF, and emerging markets, equity ETFs. What you're, looking for, uh, what you're looking at right now is the correlation matrix um, across these uh, securities. Now, the purpose of a diversification is to create a portfolio that includes individual securities that are as independent as possible. Because if you include two um, securities that are very similar to each other and they move in the same direction, then that's not much of a uh, diversification. When the market goes down, like S&P 500, when it goes down, uh, your individual security goes down with it, then what's the point of investing in both? So for instance, if you look at the Dow Jones 30 and then S&P 500, this right here, um, the 0.9461 is the correlation between Dow Jones Industrial Average and S&P 500. That means 94%, well, there's a positive 94% correlation uh, relationship between Dow Jones 30 and S&P 500, meaning um, roughly speaking, 94% of the time their movements are uh, similar. So Dow Jones and S&P 500 will move uh, very much the same. Uh, in a similar context, you see QQQ, which is the NASDAQ 100, and S&P 500 to move uh, almost, again, with 94%. Now, I included gold ETF into this simply because um, it, it is a speculative asset. It, it, it's not really easy to predict gold. It really doesn't have uh, much of uh, any value other than its uh, industrial value and its sentimental value, I guess. Um, However, in certain countries, gold is used as a savings instrument and um, it has been very volatile. So we didn't, and this data is for 2019 since January the 1st. So gold has been negatively correlated with Apple, negatively correlated with S&P 500, negatively correlated with Dow Jones, and negatively correlated with uh, NASDAQ. Now let's take a look at the, uh, the bonds. And the expected correlation between bonds and the equities is negative, and you do actually see this to be negative. So, if you look at the uh, S&P 500, there's 47% correlation between S&P 500 and um, SHY, one to three year U.S. Treasuries ETF. So this is really interesting because um, if the markets go up, we would expect SHY to go down. When markets go down, we would expect SHY to go up. Now, this is the type of diversification that we are looking for. So most ETFs, uh, most portfolios will include bonds as well as uh, stocks to take advantage of this negative correlation between equities and, and, and bonds. Now, there is a very interesting correlation, which is positive, and this is emerging market bonds and it actually has a positive correlation with the S&P 500. So this is contrary to our expectations in that we would have expected just because it's a bond ETF to have a negative correlation with equities um, and, and simply it, it doesn't have that. Now, the EEM is the uh, emerging markets um, equities stocks and you see how 80% correlation between EEM and S&P 500. And that's a very high correlation. So the question is really, uh, why would we want to consider investing in emerging markets if there's an 80% positive correlation between emerging markets and S&P 500? It's a significantly riskier investment and it actually moves very similar to S&P 500, 80% correlation positive. And um, that simply means that it's not much of a um, diversification benefit. Now, notice we don't have any statistical significance and we don't have much of a 
uh, statistical property other than the actual correlation uh, coefficient. So we say there's a positive correlation between S&P 500 and uh, EEM, emerging markets, and, and that correlation coefficient is 80%. Again, roughly speaking, they move together 80% of the time in a similar fashion. There's a linear correlation that is 80% uh, fit. Now, if we wanted to have a, a real statistical test, how much this correlation is and how reliable it is, then we do a regression, a linear regression. So uh, there are three examples in this uh, presentation. And the first one is the gold. And I, I refer to it as gold and market. Market refers to S&P 500. Now, in this case, notice the gold and S&P 500 has a correlation coefficient of negative, uh, negative 0.12, which means that as um, S&P 500 moves by 1%, gold daily return will move by negative 0.12%. So saying this again, as the S&P 500 moves by 1%, gold will move negative 0.12%. So it is a negatively correlated um, correlation. But now we have a statistical test, the t-test, and the p-value is your probability of wrongness. Um, roughly speaking. So if we were to depend on this test um, 100 times, we will be wrong 10% of the time. Uh, with, with financial sense, 10% wrongness is quite high. So 10% of the time, uh, the, this correlation coefficient is, is wrong. Therefore, we don't have statistical significance. And therefore, even though the coefficient is calculated, it is, it is worthless. Uh, the last um, statistic that we look at is R squared, uh, goodness of fit. So look at it this way. Again, roughly speaking, um, if there were 100 reasons why uh, gold would move, only 2% or about 3% of those reasons are related to the market. So the goodness of fit in our uh, sense, in this discussion, refers to the independence of gold from the market. So if you are investing in a portfolio and you're looking to diversify the market risk uh, or the S&P 500 equity market risk, then gold would be a, a, a good diversification uh, instrument simply because it is independent of, of the market. The next one is the bonds, the one to three year ETF, uh, treasury ETF and the market, the S&P 500 again. But now this time, notice the probability is, or the p-value is zero. So this is quite a reliable result. And as S&P 500 moves by 1%, SHY will move by negative 0.03%, which means that they are negatively correlated and SHY moves very, very little. Now the R squared is 0.22. This is out of one. So 22 of the 100 reasons are related to the market, again, roughly speaking. So while the SHY is independent, uh, 80, almost 80% 80 of the time, 22% of the time, it, its movement is because of the market. So you know, it's not as independent as gold where you had 2% or about 3% R squared. Uh, it is still relatively low with almost 23% of an R squared. Now, our final example is EEM. This is the emerging markets stocks. Uh, notice the p-value is zero. So this is quite statistically significant, quite reliable. And the coefficient is one, so, or 1.12. 1 so S&P 500 moves by, by 1%. EEM will move by 1.12%. It goes up by one, EEM will go up by 112. It goes down by one, EEM will go down by 112%. Now, the R squared in this case is uh, 64%. So if there were 100 reasons why EEM would move in any given day, 64 of those 100 reasons are related to SPY. Now, this is not much of an independence. We're looking at this, with respect to diversification of a portfolio, 
well, investing in emerging markets may not be your best course simply because 64% uh, are squared with the S&P 500 and EEM, emerging markets equities, is, is, is quite high. So it's really hard to talk about independence for emerging markets from the S&P 500 in this case. So this is the correlation example for a few select securities. Thank you.